Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a long, long time, and that's because I've just been focused on finishing school, um, you know, finding what is working in my trading because I've gone through quite a lot uh, since I last made a video. Uh, I actually made a video, the last time I made a video, it was like a week before I had my biggest trade and biggest day and biggest loser in the same week. And so I'll talk about that, but I'm also gonna be talking about how, why I'm going to take a gap year instead of going to college. Um, and yeah, so let's hop right into it. So becoming a full-time trader um, has a lot of benefits to it. Now, I would say you need an income if you're doing full-time trading or you need to have over a year saved up. Or the third option is you have no expenses like I do. And I'm really lucky that I found trading so early on because I have no response well i have some responsibilities but really not that much and so i'm taking this opportunity and running with it um so i have a part-time job and i'm taking a gap year just to focus full-time on my trading and what takes up most of my day is actually in excel back testing and refining my system now the last the last uh video i put out or the last recap at least was a video saying that i'm going to full-time system it was in January and I performed well that month. Um, so we'll hop into that right after I explain a bit about this gap year thing. So I wanna think about the risk reward in life. This is kind of going through my head when deciding before uh, between gap year and college. Now I was like, okay, what's the risk? Um, I, don't, I don't become successful within the year that I take a gap year. Well, I probably gained a lot of trading experience because I was able to focus full time. Um, that's a reward. Uh, a roar of another that's like worst case scenario reward now a good the best case scenario would be i you know become consistently profitable and i grow my my worth that i already have and i don't have to go to college and i start my life right from the get-go um that's best case scenario now worst case scenario again the reward would be that i gained a lot of trading experience that's gonna help me in the next years of my life uh to really keep running with it because I'm not going to give up if I don't make it this year of course I'm going to keep going at it full time well not full time but it would be part time college and trading which is very very doable um, if you're like my age and your parents are making you go to college um, or you want to go to college as a backup plan it's definitely doable um, but the reasons I didn't is because my focus will be majorly split so I'll have less time to focus on refining um, and I'll have a lot more stress, like especially near midterms and finals and stuff like that. And I was going into software engineering, the major, and that is the hardest one at the, at the specific college I was going to. Um, so I just decided, you know, it'd be best to take a gap year. There's literally the risk. There's literally no risk. Um, the risk is that I, you know, I'm a year behind, but I'm actually in a high school that is dual enrollment. So I have... Um, I have certificates from the, the community college that I was enrolled in at the same time as high school. So I have basically my AA degree, um, or at least all the general ed classes. So when I go into any four year university, I automatically um, am going into my major classes. So that cuts off a year to two years of my time. And so, you know, really I'm not behind at all. Like I'm, I'm taking a year to focus on trading. The reward is great. The risk is tiny. There's like, there's no risk at all. So zero risk, 100 million reward. So that's why I made the decision to take the gap year, um, just to give myself the best shot I have at, you know, becoming successful at trading. If I don't, then I go to college, focus on trading part time and all will be well because I'll have you know, two to three years in college to even become successful before I have to get a job. And then even if I get a job, I'm in Pacific time, I'm in California, so I can still trade before I go to my job. So I could keep going at this for 10 years, I don't care, um, I'm gonna get it. And a lot of my friends are the same way and we're motivating each other to keep pushing towards the goals. Um, and then the last thing was money constraints because going to college will get me into debt. So that's that's a risk of going to college. There's a lot more risk of going to college um, than not. So, you know, I would have gone into like 25K in debt a year, uh, not including like housing and all that. So I was just like, you know, let me take the gear, let me take the year, let me give it the best that I have. 
Now plans, my plan is just to improve my one single system as much as possible. And I mentioned this in the last month or quarterly recap or whatever, back test, forward test are fine. And right now I'm in the forward test phase. So we'll talk about this, we'll, we'll get on to the next slide, but I'll talk about some of the problems I was going through. So January, you guys kind of already saw this recap probably, if not, go back. Um, links will be in this, the description. January trading. Um, so you can see my equity curve, pretty good. Uh, the R's, they're fair. It depends on how you see, how you risk. And you know, 10R for me is a really, really good month. Um, now, of course, I'm hoping to get that up to like 30R is a good month, 40R is a good month, but 10R is a good month for me right now. So January was good, 1.7 profit factor, risk reward was about 1 to 1 1.5, um, which isn't that good. I was targeting way more, but uh, yeah, I still have a lot of re refinements to make and stuff like that. My win rate was really good because that was a fader month, and as you know, I have a fader system. So I was doing really well that month. Um, and then the next month, February, that's when the overall market just dried up completely. And uh, we didn't have any trades until really st cheap stuff started popping up. But um, I got anxious and I couldn't sit and not make any trades because I have criteria in my system and I wasn't taking any trades. So I started dab, you know, I, I was on Twitter I saw traders I know, you know, doing good. And I was like, you know what? I can trade like that. So I just I just dabbled here and there. And then before you know it, I'm mixing, I'm trading both my system and my discretionary trading. Now my discretionary trading actually was like eight plus R on the month, but my ADF system was, was negative. It was in a drawdown. Now the problem is you're probably saying, well, your, your decision to focus on discretionary trading was good because you were green, right? Well, no, because then I stopped focusing on my ADF and I stopped, um, I stopped improving it. I stopped, you know, discovering what problem was, what was the pro why was I going into a drawdown? I wasn't refining. And so this actually, this leads to a huge problem in the next couple months. But yeah, this was that month. Um, it was, it was all right. Uh, as you saw, it was, it was slow. You know, I, I was up three hours a month. That's like one trade worth, but it was, it was a fine month. It was just kind of messy. The, me the next month was very messy. It was kind of like an, ex an extension of this. Um, so you can see this BBBY trade, that was my biggest trade ever. Um, in our terms, I think, I might've had a bigger one before, but no, actually it was my biggest trade ever um, at the time. And then th that was a system trade. Um, and then you could see at the bottom, that was a discretionary trade. These are kind of like my two best trades on both categories. Um, and this month was really, good I would say because I had um well, you could see real quick you know my risk reward it was all right it's still like 1.5 if the math works like that uh, I was down a little end of the month which was a problem and my win rate was extremely low and I'll explain why that was my system my system had literally five percent win rate um now before okay so my system had super low win rate but I wasn't focused on fixing that mistake. And that was the problem. I was focused on my discretionary trading, which led to this amazing trade. Um, I completely nailed MULN because early on, I just caught on. I was like, wow, this looks exactly like CEI a while ago. And it actually turned out to run. It, it played out exactly as I thought, exactly like CEI. And I'm really happy I nailed this. Uh, so quick overview. I, I think I had a video on like the first day of this. Um, but yeah, it was a full swing and I was managing the position. It was really cool. Um, so I got in my position near the highs. I covered on the panic, not that much at all. And then I reshorted double size. Um, you know, I had a little cushion and I wanted to size in bigger. So I sized in 2X my original position. And then I covered because you could see this was creating a wedge. So I assumed there would be some kind of liquidity trap. And so I reshorted, or I covered half, and then I reshorted it all back on. Um, and I thought it would fail, but it actually hung around like an extra day. Um, but I was worried about it doing another liquidity trap, so I cut, covered like you know one one of the position. Like you can see, I had 150% of the original position left. Um, and then I realized, okay, now it's probably gonna it's probably gonna fail, fail. So I added back on to that 2x original position size started scaling out um, near two and then I was all out at two and it was my biggest trade ever because I sized in big on the good opportunity 
and it was great risk reward. So those two combined make your biggest trade. And these these runners uh, will likely be your biggest trades if you can learn to nail them. And right now, fast forwarding, I'm full system. I'm only system, no discretionary. I will make an exception for these trades. When these opportunities pop up, I will deviate. For, I will not trade my system, but I will trade these as long as I have a good feeling about them and I have a good read on them. Um, GovX was almost there, but it wasn't up enough for me and it just didn't feel right. But that was another multi-day runner. That was a good opportunity. It had an offering and all that. It was good. Um, you guys can pull up the chart. The date is 5-28-2022. Um, but yeah. Now, the next couple days, I was still trading my system at the time, as you heard, but I wasn't fixing it. But this time, I made it even worse by deciding to expand. So at the time, I was only trading day ones, but now I decided, okay, I'm going to trade everything. I'm going to trade day ones, I'm going to trade day twos, I'm going to trade intraday runners, I'm going to trade multi-day runners. And that resulted in two giant, giant red days. And then quickly, I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot keep losing at this rate. So I was like, okay, let me focus on the system. Now, April, I focused on the system and I didn't understand the problem. I didn't, I thought the problem was oh, I'm trading day twos and training intraday runners. That's bad. So I cut that out. So I focused on day ones only, but I didn't realize what the real problem was. And I kept churning. I kept losing money. So this is my biggest red month by far 20 R. Luckily, um, if we go back, these two, after these two big red days, I cut my risk over half. Like I cut it really, really down a lot. Um, so luckily this isn't a huge amount of money, um, but it's still a good amount, a big chunk of my account. Um, but 20R, that was huge. Um, you could see my risk reward is not great. Win rate was the worst thing. The system had no good win rate um, and it was really bad. So going into May this month, I discovered the problem. I'm not going to say what the problem was because, you know, it's my edge now. <laughs> um, but you can see I've been doing really well this month. And April was a lot like May, I think, in terms of like how the market was playing out. So if I had played, traded my current system in April, I think it would have been very green. Um, and, and May is an extension of April. And so this month was really good. I think the market is working really well in my favor right now. So I'm very curious to see what happens when it becomes more difficult. Um, but for now, it's looking beautiful. Um, my risk reward, two to one, which I'm hoping to get that up. But um, I'm profitable right now. I have almost a two profit factor. Like everything's looking really good. My win rate is really good right now. And I think that is because of the market sentiment in my favor. But even if it dips to like 40%, I'll still be profitable. So I'll just have to see um, and make adjustments. But yeah, focusing on discretionary is bad because even though it might be green, I'm not sizing on those trades. I, I wasn't sizing on those trades. And it's taking away my focus from, my, from really improving my system and refining it. So it just causes, it's best just to focus on one thing. Um, and, I, and I just couldn't do that. So yeah, that was this. I mean, that was overall, that was the video pretty quick, but, um, I have some plans for my YouTube channel just because now that I'm on the gap here, I have a lot of time extra. So I'll be starting uh, quarterly recaps. So every three months starting from January, so January, February, um, uh, March. So that would be the first three right now. It's kind of weird because I just recapped that. So in a month, I'll have probably a monthly recap. And then three months from there, I'll have um, a, a quarterly recap and I'll do quarterlies from there on out. Um, those will be good because you guys can see like evolution, like how I've evolved, how I've gone through the months. And it's just not, you know, one month at a time, which is good too, but whatever. Also, I'm going to be trying to upload a lot more in between. Um, my goal is one to two times per week. Um, I kind of want to do some th something like a lifestyle, uh, like vlog, like day in the life of a trader, uh, talking about, you know, all of the above, like, you know, my performance, emotions, whatever I'm doing in my personal life. Um, because really that's what I love YouTubing about, just my lifestyle. Um, and the goal in the long term is that my videos right now, you see the grind, you see the hustle. And in 10 years, my YouTube videos I hope will be the dream that I'm dreaming right now. And I hope that I'll be able to go back and see my every single day, every single hard work, what led me there. 
Um, and I think that would just be really, really awesome to look back on and stuff. Like right now I have all these videos on my YouTube channel and I go back on them and I look, wow, I've come so far in just one year of trading. Um, and I can't wait to see how I am at in five years of trading. Um, but yeah, follow me on Twitter. I'm most active there. I post my trades from time to time and thoughts. Um, but yeah, if you aren't subscribed already, be sure to do that and turn on post notifications and drop a like because the likes help a lot and uh, stick around because you won't want to miss the journey. Uh, it's going to be really crazy and there's probably a lot of lessons to be learned. Um, and before you ask, these are just like uh, blue light glasses so I don't like fry my eyes from staring at the screen all day. Um, and they also look cool. But yeah, I'll see you all uh, later. Have a good week. Have a good month. Uh, let's pray the market does not dry up. Uh, let's play. Let's pray it keeps going. Right now, it's perfect. If it could stay like this, that'd be sick. If it can change, be for the better. Let's hope. Uh, see you all later.